nerds, my name is Meredith, but you can call me Mare, and today I'm going to be reviewing my experience with Haggis Adventures 5 Day Highland Fling Tour. So the first half of this video is me talking about my general experience on a Haggis Adventures tour. Uh, I'm sure everything I say can relate to all of their other tours from one day to seven days. I took this tour at the end of last August. It was my first experience in Scotland and it was my first experience of the Scottish Highlands. And after I started researching Highland tours, I started getting a lot of targeted ads for Haggis Adventures and thought, you know what, why not? I chose the five day tour through the Highlands. It was called the Highland Fling on their website, but they have anything from one day to seven day tours, I think, plus some random holiday stuff and I think some hiking stuff that I'd really like to do. Obviously, this video is not sponsored in any way because I'm not successful enough to be sponsored yet. Yet. When I was researching whether I wanted to go on this tour, I wish there had been more information online about it. There weren't really any YouTube videos that I saw uh, that were reviewing the tour or anything like that, so I thought it would be a good thing to put out there. If someone can use it, it'll make me happy. For my overall review, I absolutely enjoyed it. It was a fantastic way to see more of Scotland besides the major cities. I not only completely fell in love with Scotland and the Highlands, but I also made friends on the tour that I still talk to on a weekly, if not almost daily basis. Now for most of the tour, you're going to be taking uh, a giant bus throughout the Highlands. On their advertisements, it's usually a yellow bus that says wild and sexy on the side, and I was really hoping we'd get that bus because I wanted to take Take some wild and sexy pictures next to it. However, we were stuck with a blue Highland Explorer bus. It was still very nice. It had all the amenities that the other bus would have, but it was just disappointing to not be as wild and sexy as we could have been. And while you're on the tour, your bus driver is also your tour guide. All of their tour guides are uh, trained to drive these big buses in the Highlands. Uh, and so throughout the whole trip, uh, if you're not listening to their bomb playlists, then uh, they're talking over the overhead about Scottish history, fun facts, uh, sometimes lies that you may need to fat check before you try to tell your friends and family. Our bus driver slash tour guide's name was Fiona. Uh, I believe her Instagram handle is at Fiona Adventures or something like that. I'll put it here. I, I think she was a really great tour guide. So Fiona, if you happen to be watching this, hi, I miss you. You were great. Another thing you might want to learn about the bus is there's no Wi-Fi on the bus and there's also not a lot of phone signal in the Scottish Highlands. So uh, I was trying to go data list the whole time I was in Scotland because I was solo traveling before uh, going to Ireland for a semester uh, so I didn't want to buy a sim card until I got into Ireland so I could have an Irish number so I was going data list so the only time I could tell my parents that I was okay and alive was when we got to stops and went to cafes and could use the Wi-Fi so fair warning if you're expecting there to be Wi-Fi or a bathroom <laughs> more important on the bus there's not and if you're thinking okay well I'll just use that expensive international data plan if you don't get a SIM card. Um, half the time in the Highlands there's no signal anyways, so good luck. There wasn't a bathroom on our bus, there might be some on other buses, but we did take frequent bathroom breaks if necessary, if you want to make sure none of us exploded. But there was one important amenity on the bus, and that was a cooler at the front that was reserved mostly for beer that we individually bought, but it could be used for something else in case of an emergency. So yes, if you're worried about your beer getting hot, not to worry, there's a cooler for that. When you're not on the bus and you're sleeping at night, you'll be staying in hostels. Uh, these hostels are, for the most part, uh, mixed gender rooms. They're usually the bigger rooms. I think one night I was in an all-female room with some other girls from the tour, but for the most part it was large mixed gender rooms. I was never in a situation, and I don't know anyone who was ever in a situation, where they were in a room with no one else from the tour group, so at the very least you're going to be in a room with other people from your tour group. As for the people who are taking the tour, for the people on my bus it was a mixture of friends going on trips to solo travelers. I met some other female solo travelers who I really enjoyed spending time with. There are a few couples and there's also a few uh, sons taking their moms on trips through the Highlands, which was really adorable. It's not just a bunch of young people, it's not just a bunch of old people. It's a very nice mixture, at least in my case. By the end of the trip, you end up actually getting really close to the people you're on the bus with because you're spending uh, five days with each other almost constantly. So by the end, I was Facebook friends and Instagram followers with almost every single person. It really is a bonding experience and it does feel like a family environment by the end. Now for the rest of this video, I'm going to briefly talk about all of the things that we did on our specific Highland Fling five-day tour. This schedule is certainly not guaranteed if you're taking the five-day tour, um, but 
if they advertised any major attractions on the website, you will most likely be going to those attractions unless there's construction or some big obstacle preventing you from doing it. But the major things on their website you will go to see and it'll be great. So on day one we met at the Haggis Adventures uh, store? Not really store, but their place of business uh, on the Royal Mile in Edinburgh. So they gave us wristbands that would tell us which bus we would be on, and we all kind of sat around and chatted with each other until the buses got there, and then we took off. Fiona told us a bit about the history of Edinburgh and some fun stories while we left, and then we were off to the Highlands. Uh, our first stop was at the Kelpies, and I don't think I took a video there, but I think I did attempt to take a funny picture there. Uh, so here we go. So if you didn't have a chance to get coffee or breakfast that morning, there is a cute little coffee shop area at the Kelpies where you can grab a muffin and a subpar latte. So the first stop we took when we were actually in the Highlands was the Wallace Monument, and we took a funny picture here. Obviously this monument is to William Wallace, and if you don't know who that is, you can watch Braveheart for a very inaccurate depiction of William Wallace. They may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! We also stopped by a farm to pet and or feed some of Scotland's famous Harry Coos. Next we stopped in Glencoe and were able to hike a little bit up a mountain, certainly not to the top, but just enough for a great photo shoot with a Scottish flag that Fiona conveniently brought with her. Our final stop of the day was in Oban, which is where we spent the night. We stayed at a hostel there, which was really, really cute. That night we went to a traditional Scottish Cayley. Uh, we were escorted there by a bagpipe player. <laughs> And then after dancing the night away and sweating through all of our clothes, we all went to bed very quickly. Day two was what I like to refer to as the Harry Potter day, because we started our day by driving to the train station. We're given the opportunity to meet the bus at the next stop uh, as we drove over the Glenfinnan, Glenfinnan, Glenfinnan Viaduct, which is the one that the Hogwarts Express drives over in Harry Potter. I wore my Harry Potter sweater that I had bought in Edinburgh that day and got to take pictures next to the steam engine with the steam uh, flowing by me and felt very magical. That day we also saw Eileen Donan, Eileen, Eileen Donan Castle, which is the one you see on all the pictures of the Scottish Highlands. That day we also, I believe, drove onto Isle of Skye, which is a name you'd recognize if you watched the show Outlander. And as we drove over the Sky Bridge, we got to listen to the Sky Boat song. And that night we spent the night at Saucy Mary's. Obviously there's more things that, than that that we do in a day, but I'm just kind of hitting the highlights because to be honest, I don't remember it all. It was in August and it is end of March now. Uh, day three, you're gonna do a lot of walking, so this is a good day to wear the hiking boots if you brought them. The first stop we went to was Kilt Rock, which also had a very cool story behind it that relates to uh, a Scottish giant. I don't remember the story, so you're gonna have to go on the tour and hear it. We also stopped at Sky Brewery and got to taste some of their beers and purchase a few. We also visited the city Portree that day. It's the city with the colorful houses uh, against the harbor, and I believe it was the first city to have that uh, design with the colorful houses on the harbor. Uh, but my favorite part of Portree was uh, a bakery that we walked by called McKinsey's Bakery, I believe. I think it was that. And they had very cheap, very delicious scones that you could get with the cream and jam. And oh my gosh, I went back for a second one before we left. They were so inexpensive and so delicious. If you're in Portree, please get one. We also were planning to hike up to the Old Man of Store that day. Uh, we did make it there and managed to hike up a little bit of the way, but we didn't actually get the whole way up to be able to see the Old Man of Store, which is just a rock formation. And we arrived in Loch Ness and stayed at Morag's Lodge for the first night. We spent two nights there and took the last boat tour of Loch Ness of the summer. And if you have the opportunity to take the Loch Ness uh, ferry, boat tour, whatever it is. I highly suggest it. It was really great. I'm now kind of a messy believer. Day four was kind of the outlander day. Our first stop was the Trees for Life uh, tree planting area. Basically, it's an organization trying to restore Scotland's natural forests, uh, known as the Caledonian Forest. And if you donate a bit of money when you're purchasing your tour through Haggis, uh, they'll help plant trees at the nursery. And so you get to help restore some of Scotland's natural forest. We also drove through Inverness on the way to Culloden. Culloden was the 
battlefield that was the last stand of the Jacobite revolution. Uh, it was a big part of Outlander season two if you've seen it, and it was kind of known in history as the death of Highlander culture itself. So it's a very sad stop. We also that day visited the Clava Cairns, I believe. The site is named for these big circular stone tombs. There are also several standing stones at the Clava Cairns, and uh, we got to recreate some fantastic Outlander pictures and videos while we were there. It was absolutely magical. Uh, <laughs> that day we also visited either Tomatin or Tomatin, something like that, not tomato. It was a whiskey distillery. We got to taste some of their whiskey and it was really interesting to hear about the history of whiskey making in Scotland as well as the process that they use. Uh, and I am very much a whiskey girl myself, so it was a great stop. I believe on the website it was advertised that the last night at Morag's Lodge would be spent doing a tartan toga party, but I think the tartan toga party only happens on certain nights. The last night that we were there, uh, we had a pub quiz and it was super fun. Some of us from the tour made a team and we called ourselves Fiona's Ogres, you know, Shrek, and in honor of our fantastic tour guide, Fiona, whom we love, and we actually ended up winning the whole pub quiz. We ended up winning a bottle of champagne that we celebrated with, and it was an absolutely glorious way of finishing the Highland trip. Save some energy for your last night there because it's so fun and a really great way to just like bond even more with the people you've been spending the last four days with. The last day, day five, is when you head back to Edinburgh. However, there are a few stops that we take on the way back. We stop first by Loch Lo Loki, and we all took a group picture beside the loch. We also stopped by the Commando Memorial that day, and it was a clear day, so we were actually able to see the peak of Ben Nevis from where we were, so that was really cool. Ben Nevis is the highest peak in the UK, and it's absolutely on my Scottish bucket list to be able to climb to the top one day. We also visited the Hermitage Forest. It had this log that was completely covered in coins that people had banged into it with hammers or their shoe or whatever, and I think it was a wishing log, so if you bang a coin into the log and, you know, keep it there, then I guess your wish will come true. My wish was probably, I hope I don't die for the rest of my solo trip, and I'm still here, so the wishing log works. And then as we were heading back into Edinburgh, we stopped to see the, I believe, fourth bridges, uh, F-O-R-T-H. Uh, it's actually three bridges, uh, the Queen's Ferry Crossing, the Fourth Road Bridge, and the Fourth Bridge, uh, and they're three bridges in close proximity to each other with a lot of history behind them. Uh, it was a very sad stop because we knew we had pretty much officially left the Highlands and we'd have to go our separate ways soon. And finally we finished the trip where we began the trip at the Haggis Adventures location in Edinburgh. We all got off the bus and grabbed our bags and gave everyone a big hug and then headed our separate ways. For reference, if you're looking for good places to stay in Edinburgh either before or after your trip or just in general, I stayed at both the Kick-Ass Hostel and the Castle Rock Hostel and very much enjoyed both of them, so both would be a great option uh, if you wanted to do one and the other one was fully booked or something. But yeah, that was my full review of Haggis Adventures' five-day Highland fling and haggis. <laughs> if, you're, if you're watching this uh, and you would like to have me review more of your trips, uh, feel free to send me on some of them. I would very much like to do the West Highland Way hike. I might be based in Glasgow uh, starting this fall, so if you're looking for someone to promote some more of your trips, you know who to call. Well, thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you want more content like this, I guess. Uh, and I'll see ya when I see ya.